What? Mole? Yeah, I'm talking authentic. So much flavor from all the good old dried chilies they are, but then we're throwing in the rest of the ingredients that go with it, which are peanuts, almonds, ooh, they are so good, and raisins. Come on, folks, because I'm gonna dish you a plate covered up with some of that good mole sauce. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by Under the Barn. We appreciate you taking time to watch this episode. And what are we talking about? Mole. Yes, not ole like you was bullfighting, but mole. What is it? It is a really rich sauce. This is traditional. We've changed it up just a little to add a little more heat. But it's been going on down there by forever and ever in Mexico. And it was always usually served over chicken, sometimes fish, sometimes beef, sometimes fork, fork, pork but I've always mostly seen it over chicken. People see the ingredient list and they get sort of scared off as to what this might be and it's too much trouble. Folks, it is worth the effort, I promise you. So, hey, remember everything that we use today will be listed down there in the little link below. And hey, we're just proud to have you here, so let's make some mole. Now, when we're talking about mole and we're talking about a really, really rich, red, thick sauce that has so much authentic flavor, the main ingredient and the star of the show to me is what? The dried chilies. Yes, yeah, so we, we've got some here. All of these players want to be a part of the chili family that go into, yeah, you can't see me, can you? Into the mole. Now, we did a video on chilies, my favorite ones, what they sort of taste like, the flavor you're going to get from using them, and what you use them for. So I'm going to meet you over here at the fire, and we're going to talk about cutting up a chicken and putting it in some hot water and boiling him down. There is a whole chicken in there. Be careful. It might fly out when we take the lid off. No, it's still in there. But guess what? That chicken is cut up. Now, some of you are saying, well, I can't cut up a chicken. Folks, they cheaper if you buy the whole chicken, cut them up yourself. Go back and look at our fried chicken video. We'll show you how to take apart that chicken piece by piece. Get him in there, enough water to cover it, usually about six to eight cups. Then some salt, some bay leaves, just let it boil for about 45 to 55 minutes until that chicken is fork tender. And then what are we going to do? We're just going to go ahead and turn him out because I guarantee you he is fork tender. If I can find a spot that ain't too hot, we're going to set him right over here and just let it set. Now, I have me a little sauce pot that has got some water in it to about right there. So we got our Marquette skillet here, and in an upcoming video, you're going to see me really talk about this thing, how it performs, how it cleans, and how it reseasons. But today, we are using it to roast chilies. And Shan said, well, why do you want to roast them? Folks, there's so much flavor that is going to come out of these things when they get roasted. Then we'll put them over here in the water, and we'll rehydrate them, let it come to a good boil there for about five or six minutes, and then just let it simmer, and we'll be done with that part of it. Well, look what we got here. We have some roasted tomato. Uh-huh. Two Roma tomatoes they are. Go in there. I like to just go ahead and give them a mash down in there. That way we know everything's going to take off. Four roasted garlic cloves. Could you also do that over the fire? Uh-huh. You could if you got a burner. It fell through that and over yonder, but hey, if you got it just to, or over a grill, if you don't fire the grill up. Now, how do we know them chilies is like we like them? So let's reach in here and get us one of these right here, and you can see how it just pulls apart oh so easy, and ooh, that is hot, it is. Now, we started out with four ancho, six cascabel, six guajillo chilies, and what? One chili de arbol, uh-huh. Oh my gosh, folks, there's so much flavor in there, but they got a little heat. If you think you might not want all the heat, cut it in half, but just try it once first before you go to cutting it in half. So try to let some of this water drain off of these. Oh, we had a jumper. One tried to get out. We're going to get the rest of them in there. Do not throw this broth away. We are going to need it here after a while. Be sure you save it. Don't be thinking that it's not got no cause for the rest of this because it does in fact. And if there's a few seeds left in there, hey, you ain't going to hurt nothing. Dig around in there. Make sure everybody's out of the fishing hole. Now comes that moment that Kent always dreads because he never knows which button to push or is it going to come on or is it not going to come on. So we're going to see what happens. Ain't a whole lot happening in there. That is why we reserve some of this broth. So let's give it, I'd say, half a cup to start out with. 
give it a good mashing down in there so you can sort of stir things around because we want things to blend well, we do. Back to the electricity we go. We can't be adding all the rest of the ingredients to this because it will have a volcano. So go ahead and get you a pretty big sauce pot and let's pour our first round in there. And I want y'all to look at that good color. Ain't that pretty? Took that skillet there, added me a little lard, cut up a big old honking white onion and just cooked it till it was good and browned and tendered and tossed it in the blender we did. Now we got that same cast iron skillet sitting right there. We're gonna add us some more lard. Now why are you using lard? It is traditional that we use lard. Now, hey, we always use lard and we use little for everything because when hog killing day come along, you always rendered off the lard and you had plenty of yard. Yard, lard. Things is having a lot of trouble coming out today, they are. So give that a little swirling around there and I'm gonna tell you right now the handle is hot. You'd think Kent who sells them skillet handle covers would have one out here with him. But if Shan will pan around right there and show you, that's where they're at because we fit and hit the road. So we got things going here. Almonds, one cup. How you say Shan? Almonds. Almonds. And folks, it don't take long to fry these up but it's gonna help tender them up a little. So make sure they all get a coating of that lard. Now, half a cup of peanuts, mm-hmm, cause you gotta have it. Now, I know that some folks, they don't be using almonds and peanuts. You know what they use, Shen? I don't know. Almond butter and peanut butter. It just takes out a step. But folks, when we said something about traditional, I wanna sort of try to keep it that way. So go ahead and let's just put them right in here. If you get some of them toasted a little too much, hey, it ain't gonna hurt a thing. Just let them cool off there a little. Put that skillet back over here. Guess what's next, Shen? Do you have any idea? The pumpkin seeds, because yes. the recipe. But folks, we can't get pumpkin seeds that ain't got the hull on them. So you can, I mean, we eat them like this all the time. We don't never shell them, we just eat the whole thing. Let's just go ahead and toast them. There was enough lard left in there, we're gonna give them just a little coat in there. Now, a lot of this you could be doing and just put all this right in here. I did that the other day, got arthritis really bad, I did. So we're gonna go in a food processor here in a minute to see if we can grind this up, hull and all. So remember them onions? Let's just go ahead and get these right in there with them because we need all that great flavor that they're gonna bring to it. While that skillet is dry there, we gotta add us some sesame seed and we just wanna toast them lightly so it don't take long cause that skillet is done hot. About four tablespoons, which I'm saying is pretty close to that right there. And just give them a good toasting. It's gonna bring out so much more of that flavor and it don't take them long to brown up, get all nice and toasty and crispy crunchy. You see me transfer them sesame seeds in there and put some anise seed with it and what else? Some cloves. So what now, is an anise seed? Well, people say, hey, that's the same as fennel seed, ain't it? No, no, it's not. Or, or star of anise, it's not the same as that. But they are a little seed that's been grown over in Egypt forever and ever. They're really good and sort of in a way, sort of tastes like a fennel seed. But when I was grinding these up, even you noticed it, you get that licorice smell that comes out there and a sweet smell with it. We got a little more lard in there. You ever fry raisins? I have not. Well, you are today, sugar. We're gonna put some raisins in there and some cinnamon stick. Yes, we are. Now, when you fry a raisin, they try to regain their original shape and plump up a little. Let them fry till they get good and plumped up. Get that cinnamon stick all soaked in there really well. It don't take them long to puff up. You can see they've already started. Over a hot fire, you're gonna probably go maybe two minutes at the most. Just keep stirring so you don't burn the raisin because He's all shriveled up to begin with. Don't punish him no more than he already has been. So see if you can get it all in there before somebody tries to jump out on the table and you see some of them saying, I ain't going, uh -huh, ain't gonna happen. We got everybody in there. We did all that good grinding right here. So I'm gonna make sure you get all that in here cause we need that flavor that it's gonna bring to it. Now traditionally, this would not be sort of the last thing that we put in the blender. A lot of them are gonna go ahead and maybe get some, some old bread, 
and fry it too till it becomes crusty and put it in there. Also, I've seen them use flour tortilla and put it in there. Now that is sort of going to give it a starchy, well I won't say starchy, but a more floury base to where it's thickening in that sauce, but also give it a little different flavor. Hey, you've seen the sauce pour out of there. It was plenty thick as it was. So we're going to go ahead and add a little of that reserved chili broth because I'm thinking we might need it and it might take more than that. Let's see what happens. So we're going to go ahead and just pour it right on in here. Make sure you get it all in there. You those peanuts. Uh-huh. And them almonds, and I still get that licorice smell, I do. Now you can see that rich red color come right back there to it after them peanuts and almonds and everybody got in there and the little raisins. But folks, I like to blend it all again one more time just to get all them flavors incorporated really well. And then we'll go to letting it simmer and we'll add some more goodness to it you didn't see coming. Everything has been re-blended and in the pot. So guess what? Half a stick of butter. Mm-hmm. Two Contipolo bouillon cubes. Uh-huh. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a stir. And while it's beginning to melt, we just come to a simmer in here. And I'm not gonna thin it yet till I get all this in there. Now, they be using a lot of Mexican chocolate. Folks, I can't be finding that here. So, we have Ghirardelli, dark chocolate. That's all I can tell you. Now, to me, I like to go ahead and break them up. If you wanna grate them, you can do that because this is gonna melt. This is also gonna darken that color to where we get that rich sort of golden, I won't say golden, sort of a dark brown color to mix with that red. Then we'll add a little water or chicken broth if you want to. I'll tell you what, since I like y'all, I'm gonna change this recipe right in the middle of it. I am, uh-huh. I mean, I'm going all out. Forego the water, Shen. Let's move our chicken that we boiled back over there. Just reach right in there and get you some of that chicken broth. Make sure you don't get none of them bay leaves. I'm gonna start with a half a cup at a time. So what, what are you looking for? I just want it to where it's gonna be thin enough that it'll sort of stay on that meat that we're putting it for. But sort of like a, I'd say a, maybe thinner than, a, thicker than a pancake batter. I'll put it that way. So we're gonna add just a tad more. The big says, I'm all about some chicken, Dad. Just go ahead on. And you can see that is blended pretty well. Now, when you get it to that point, make sure, like I say, you got it stirring. You got it stirred all the time. Turn her down on low heat. And I need you to taste it. Mm. That is some fine dining right there. It is. Needs just a little hint of a salty taste to me. So we're going to give it, let me make sure, some of that mesquite seasoning. You know where to get it. We got a good little simmer going here, just percolating like a coffee pot it is. I like to let this simmer about 20 minutes to give that bouillon there, that condipolo to mix all in there with that chocolate and get all them flavors enhanced really well. About 20 minutes in, then what are we gonna do? Folks, that boiled chicken. Now, a lot of them don't do it this way, but I like to stick my chicken back in here and let it cook for about another 15 minutes in there. Let that flavor get in there and penetrate it all. Then we're gonna take it out, plate it, Ooh, we gonna eat it, and it's gonna be fine dining. Done, deal it is, stick a fork in it I done half. I'm letting it cool just a little bit, but mm, you see me just go ahead and just get that chicken out of there. I picked me out a piece of that there breast, laid it right out there. Run me some more of that sauce over it, sprinkled some sesame seed on there. I've had a lot of good help today, Shin, I have. Now they can't be eating mole, huh? So Kent has carried some treats in his pocket out here for the children. So let me see what happened to all of them. Mage, yours disappeared, you're not gonna get one. 
Not really, buddy. I'm going to let you be first today since you are the tiniest. Good job. Big sight says, please me next. Okay. And here comes Duker. Duker, go ahead and get yours. Come on, it's all right. Big, thank you for being the one who has always been with us to keep us busy all the time. You got good manners. Do not get this till I tell you. You just wait right there. You're such a good pup. Love you. You can go ahead. Atta boy. Now it's time for me to have mine. I'll cut that one more time right there. And before I do this, I'm going to tell you, if you want to jump this up another flavor notch, when you take that chicken out of that pot, put it over there on a good hot smoker and let it get a little smoke going onto it before you put it in there. You'll be thanking me. You will. Mm. Describe. There is so, so many flavors coming out of there. You get the smokiness of all them peppers that we blended through there. Just a little bit of spice from that chili day or ball. But the thing that stands out to me more than anything is the, the anise seed and the peanuts, raisins, and everything that's been toasted. You just, it's like a, an overwhelming goodness that just takes a hold of all your taste buds and you think, I've never tasted nothing like this before in my life. It is so good that in fact, I am gonna have another bite. Mm. Then you get that feeling deep inside. Makes you want to do the shivel and get all bright. And we'll just do a little moonwalk. Come back down there. Well, there it is. It is finished and ooh, it was so good. Like I say, so many flavors coming out of there. It's not that hard to make, folks. Just follow the instructions. You don't get lost. I didn't. But as always, and with honor, I tip my hat to all the servicemen and women and all the veterans who have served and keep that old flag of flying back there for us. We appreciate you one and all. There's not a day that goes by that we don't thank you. We don't. Appreciate it, each and every one of you. Now, the rest of you, get on in here. Come on, we're gonna get that old big old hug and we're gonna do the mole. Oh, it is so good. God bless you, each and every one, and I'll see you down the red mole chicken trail. You'll meet, wait a minute. Almonds. 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 Hey, Shen, come, come here. Y'all ever get ready to cook in your kitchen and someone has pooped on your counter? <laughs> I mean, I think it comes from these fellers that roost up here at night. It's that one. It could be, he's kicked the boards off. He has, must be overcrowding. But if you see this at your house, you know the roof ain't good. So, hey, never know what could be happening in the kitchen. We have launched some new apparel, some t-shirts, sweatshirts. We got you fixed up, so be sure and check them out.